Alright guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about the basic structures of the heart. Now before we start, let's quickly define the function of the heart. Alright, what's the basic function of the heart? Well, the basic function of the heart is to constantly pump oxygenated blood throughout the body. And as we know, without oxygen, our cells would start to die. All right, our cells constantly need oxygen to perform cellular respiration so they can get the energy they need in order to function. And in addition, without the right amount of oxygen, our cells would start to die. And obviously, guys, that's not good. So thankfully, our heart and lungs work together to constantly supply our cells with the oxygen they need in order for them to survive. So now that we know that, let's start labeling the basic structures of the heart. Let's start by naming the basic blood vessels of the heart. So first, let's look at this blood vessel and this blood vessel. These two blood vessels are the biggest veins in your body. Now the question is, what are these two blood vessels called? Well, the top one is called the superior vena cava, and the bottom blood vessel is called the inferior vena cava. All right. And again, these two blood vessels are the biggest veins in your body, and both the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava are responsible for bringing deoxygenated blood, deoxygenated blood into the heart. All right, sweet. So now that we know that, let's look at the pulmonary arteries of the heart. This artery right here is our left pulmonary artery. And this artery right here, right pulmonary artery. And sometimes in other pictures, if you look up other pictures of the heart online, you're going to see that the right pulmonary artery sometimes is shown right here behind the superior vena cava. All right, but in this picture, the right pulmonary artery is shown right here. So moving on, let's try to make sense of why these arteries are called pulmonary arteries. The reason why these arteries are called pulmonary arteries because these arteries are blood vessels that take blood away from the heart and to the lungs, hence the pulmonary part in the name. So whenever, whenever I see the word pulmonary, I immediately think of the lungs. And artery, the definition of an artery is a blood vessel that takes blood away away from the heart away from the heart and if we put it all together again a pulmonary artery is a blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart and towards the lungs, hence the pulmonary part of the name. So now that we've gone over the pulmonary arteries of the heart, a question that pops up in my mind is that if there's pulmonary arteries, shouldn't there be pulmonary veins? And in fact, there are pulmonary veins of the heart. And the pulmonary veins of the heart are shown right here and right here. All right. So these are your two left pulmonary 
veins of the heart. And the reason why it's your left pulmonary veins is again because it's on the left side of your heart. So just to make it less confusing, this side of the heart is the left side of the heart and this side of the heart is the right side of the heart. That's why these are your left pulmonary veins. So if this is the left side of your heart and these are called your left pulmonary veins, the pulmonary veins on the right side of your heart would make sense to be called the right pulmonary veins of your heart. Right pulmonary veins of your heart. All right, awesome. So, so far we've got the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, the left pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery, the two left pulmonary veins, and the two right pulmonary veins. And actually guys, one thing I forgot to mention, and that's actually pretty cool, is that these two openings right here, this one and this one, these openings are made for your superior and inferior vena cavas. So this opening is for your inferior vena cava. All right, so that little structure is an opening for your inferior vena cava. And similarly, this opening right here is an opening for your superior vena cava. And in addition, these two openings right here on the left side of the heart are openings for your two left pulmonary veins. All right, so these two openings are for your two left pulmonary veins. All right, sweet. So now that we've gone over the openings and what they're for, let's look at this huge artery right here. All right, this huge artery altogether is called the aorta. All right, and the aorta is in fact the biggest artery of the body. All right, just like we said before, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava were the biggest veins of your body. Just like that, the aorta is the biggest artery of the body. All right, so last but not least, guys, for the basic blood vessels of the heart, let's take a look at the three branches off the aorta. All right, so let me go ahead and color code these three branches off the aorta as one, two, and three. And let me go ahead and write it out to the side right here. So the first branch off the aorta is called the brachiocephalic artery or it's called the brachiocephalic trunk. All right, the second branch off the aorta is called the left common carotid artery. And last but not least, the third branch off the aorta is called the left subclavian artery. Okay, so the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery are the three branches off the aorta that you guys see in the picture. So, so far, we've covered the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, the left pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery, the two left pulmonary veins and the two right pulmonary veins. And just in the last slide, we just finished covering the
the aorta and the three branches of the aorta. All right, so we pretty much just finished covering the names of the basic blood vessels of the heart. So now let's move on to the four chambers of the heart. So before we move on and start labeling the chambers of the heart, let's quickly outline what exactly those four chambers of the heart are. The heart will consist of two atria and two ventricles. All right, both these two atria and two ventricles will make up the four chambers of the heart. Now that we know that, let's start labeling where exactly these four chambers of the heart are located. So let's start by locating the two atria of the heart, which are right here and right here. Okay, these two chambers are the two atria of the heart. In particular, this chamber is called your left atrium. All right, and this chamber of the heart is called your right atrium. Again, the right and left come from the fact that this side of the heart is the left side of your heart and this side of your heart is the right side of your heart. That's why these two atria are named the left atrium for the left side of your heart and the right atrium for the right side of your heart. So, so far we've talked about where the two atria of your heart are located. Now, let's talk about where the two ventricles of your heart are located. So the two ventricles of your heart are actually located right here and here. All right, these are your two ventricles of your heart. In particular, this ventricle is called your left ventricle because again, it's on the left side of your heart and it's a ventricle. And this ventricle right here is called your right ventricle. And together, the right atrium, the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the right ventricle make up the four chambers of your heart. All right, now, all we have left is to go over the four valves of your heart. So let's go ahead and get started. The four valves in your heart are really important because they, they perform a very vital role in the heart. And the vital role that the valves in your heart perform is that they ensure that the blood in your heart will only flow in one direction. So in other words, valves will prevent any regurgitation of blood. Now what the heck does regurgitation of blood mean? Well, let's look at the heart below. Let's say that there's blood sitting in your right atrium and when the blood flows down into your right ventricle, we don't want blood going back from the right ventricle and into the right atrium. That's called regurgitation of blood and that's what the valves prevent. All right, so let's go over the four valves of the heart. First, this valve is called the tricuspid valve of the heart. And you can't see it in this picture because it's a 2D picture of the heart, but usually the tricuspid valve has three flaps to it. All right, not two like it's shown in the picture. And this valve right here is called the bicuspid valve because it has two flaps. 
all right, because of the bi. And in addition, the bicuspid valve is also called the mitral valve. And altogether, both the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve, together, they make up what's called the atrioventricular valves of the heart. All right, so both the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve make up the atrioventricular valves of the heart. And why am I saying atrioventricular? Well, if you notice the word atrio refers to the atria of the heart and ventricular refers to the ventricles of the heart. And so if you look closely in the picture below, these are the atria of the heart and these are the ventricles of the heart, right? And again, these are the atrioventricular valves of the heart, all right? In specific, remember this one was called the tricuspid valve and this one was called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. And now you can clearly see that the atrioventricular valves separate the atria of the heart from the ventricles of the heart. And that's why both the bicuspid valve and or mitral valve and the tricuspid valve are called the atrioventricular valves of the heart. All right. And so now we can move on and start talking about the semilunar valves of the heart. So the semilunar valves of the heart are these two valves right here. All right, let me highlight it in a brighter color. Yeah, these two valves right here. And this valve right here is called your aortic valve. All right, and this valve right here is called your pulmonic valve, pulmonic valve. All right, and so last slide, we talked about the atrioventricular valves, which were the tricuspid and bicuspid valves. And in this slide, we can see that we've located where the aortic valve is and where the pulmonic valve is. And together, both the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve make up the semilunar valves of the heart. All right, so last slide, both the tricuspid and bicuspid valves made up the atrioventricular valves of the heart. In this slide, we saw that the pulmonic valve and the aortic valve both make up the semilunar valves of the heart. And so um, the good news is that we're actually done, right? We just finished identifying the basic structures of the heart, which consisted of the basic blood vessels of the heart, the basic chambers of the heart, and the four valves of the heart. And we just went over that. And these basic structures of the heart, let me tell you guys, are really important to know and know well, all right? Because it's gonna help you guys understand the pathway of blood through the heart as the heart contracts. And we're gonna talk about the pathway of blood through the heart in another video. Um, but my next video is going to be about the layers of the heart. And once we know both the structures and the layers of the heart, it's going to be much easier for us to understand what route blood takes through the heart as the heart contracts. All right. And actually, I was thinking before we go, let's do a short quiz. All right. So pause the video and try to identify all the structures of the heart that we went over in this video. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So just to short things up a bit, um, I'll be abbreviating the structures mostly. So let's start off with the superior vena cava. I'm just going to be saying the SVC and the inferior vena cava is the IVC for inferior vena cava. 
Um, next, let's look at these two. These are your two left pulmonary veins, and these are your two right pulmonary veins. And this artery is your left pulmonary artery, and this artery is your right pulmonary artery. All right, moving on to the aorta. This huge structure right here is your aorta and the three branches off your aorta. Let me go ahead and color code it and write that down on the bottom of the page so it's easier to see. So the first branch off the aorta, remember it's called the brachiocephalic trunk. The second branch off the aorta is called the left common carotid artery. And last but not least, the third branch off the aorta is called the left subclavian artery. Now that we're done with that, let's move on to the chambers of the heart. So let's start off by identifying this chamber of the heart, which is the right atrium, this chamber of the heart, which is the right ventricle, this chamber of the heart, which is your left atrium, and last but not least, this chamber of the heart, which is our left ventricle. So the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle, are the four chambers of the heart. And lastly, guys, let's go over the four valves of the heart. So this valve of the heart is called the tricuspid valve. And this valve of the heart is called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. And this valve is called the pulmonic valve. And last but not least, this valve right here is called the aortic valve. And that's it. So hopefully you guys actually tried to identify the structures by yourself and hopefully you guys got all these right. Um, in the next video, I'll be making a video about um, the layers of the heart. And so I really hope to see you guys there.